Okay, so load monitoring in practice. We're getting into the real nuts and bolts of it now. Applied load monitoring is a cyclical process. It's a process of acquisition of the actual data, processing the data, interpreting the data, and then communicating the data. That's a really important part that some of us forget, uh, communicating with the coaches um, in within an embedded uh, performance ecosystem. So the person running the GPS and interpreting it really has to be part of the organization. Like my grad students, when they work with um, the Catapult system here, they become part of the team. You know, the the um, the athletes, because we, we do it mostly with the women's soccer team here. So the girls on the team, like they look to my grad student as kind of another part of the coaching staff. But that grad student gets a lot of responsibility and sometimes they even travel with the teams um, and and you really have to be embedded. Okay, so the core goal is to transform the raw data that you get into actionable insights, okay, data to insights. That's the whole part, uh, point of sports science. Um, and this requires robust methodology, sports specific contextual understanding. You have to know the sport. You don't have to to run the GPS, but to make better insights, you have to have somebody on the team who can translate that into sport. Communication fluency, so soft skills are very important. Um, and so it's best contextualized within that white box training model. So if you don't, if you don't know what the coach is doing, if you don't know what the strength coach is doing, if you don't know what's going into training, but you're supposed to run the GPS and make insights, you're not going to be able to do a good job. You have to know all the other training components that are going into uh, what those athletes are doing. Okay. Now it's in context with the other testing and monitoring that's happening. So, you know, are you doing other types of injury surveillance? Because you can't like, let's say hamstring injuries, for instance, this is um, a hamstring testing device. Uh, you can't just look at um, the load on its own and high speed running on its own to be able to tell trends in what's causing hamstring injuries for your team. Okay. You also have to do things like measure their actual strength of their hamstrings, right to left um, deficiencies. Look at, um, is their strength level enough for their body mass? Okay. Uh, you can even look at things like what is the, uh, what is the formation of the athletes on the pitch to get a better description, to look at video and, uh, the load at the same time, the training load at the same time. This is uh, myself and our and our former strength coach figuring out how to fly a drone so that we could put it over the soccer t uh, team while they were running their practice. So we could uh, get a bird's eye view, so to speak, of the drills that they were running and then look at that next to some of the uh, data we were getting from Catapult. Okay, and so really we want to um, explore then exploit, okay? So explore, then exploit. And so I'm gonna tell you kind of what we did with our university soccer team and then um, and some of the successes that we had with them. And then we're gonna go into some different use cases that you might be able to pull out with your teams. So year one, when we started working with Catapult, was all about observation, okay? We established positional demands. What uh, kind of uh, distances, high speed running distances, number of accelerations did our different positions uh, cover during a match? Whether they were center mid, uh, when, whether they were a fullback, whether they were a striker, uh, you know, a forward on the soccer team. Um, what were the different positional demands and how did individual players uh, meet those demands uniquely? Some of, some of the players had, uh, you know, uh, within the same position, let's say two different midfielders, some of them had a huge total distance. I'm talking like 10K, 12K, 13K in a game for females. And it, that's quite a lot, you know, from what I can tell uh, from division two data that's out there and, or data with females, which there's not a lot. So if you work with a female team and you're doing, you're doing any type of GPS, please keep track of the data and, and get permission to publish it because there's not enough data um, on females yet. And so we established positional demands. We um, establish player norms, as I said. What does this player typically cover during a game when they're playing you know, X number of minutes during that game? What are our starters versus our non-starters? What are the benchmarks? What top speed do the girls have to have to really be effective? How many accelerations should they be getting if they're um, on defense? You know, all of these observations, we, uh, we didn't really do anything different with training. We just observed. And that's a really important step because I think sometimes we can get really excited about technology and think, oh, we're going to go change training radically. But if the team is successful, uh, you know, and oftentimes it's successful teams that then get sports science technology because of funding, if they're already successful, don't step in and ruin a good thing, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We have that saying in America. Maybe you guys have that as well. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so we just observe at first. 
making sure we don't mess anything up and we're just a fly on the wall. And, and if the coach asks for uh, feedback and, and data, of course we're gonna have those conversations, we're doing the, the data reports, but we're not really changing very much. It was really year two that we started to have interventions. Okay, this, uh, we had a big impact in return to play protocols because we had, for some reason, I think it, you know, we couldn't really figure out exactly what it was, but there was a, a high number of hamstring um, and knee issues, non-contact at the end of the season. And, um, and yeah, the, the, we didn't see actually any trends in their, data, in their testing data or in the, low, in the player load data. And sometimes when, you know, when you're working with a team of 25 individuals, it could just be bad luck. You know, it could just be bad luck. So we, we also have to try to not see, uh, you know, sort of trends where there aren't trends. Um, but we did help their return to play by saying, hey, here's where there were. And now we have an established benchmark for them so they can return to play. Also impacted conditioning sessions. So we knew the demands we had to prepare them for. And we knew when they had to be prepared for them. It impacted player substitutions. So we could tell when we could tell live because we had somebody out there with the iPad tracking. Oh, hey, this player has hit. They've exceeded already 110% of their high-speed running volume. Let's let's go ahead and pull them. And even if they say no, coach, leave me in. We're like, well, uh, you know, we're gonna pull you. We're gonna swap you out because we have a game in two days, right? And so being able to make better decisions on the fly. And so this is just um, an Excel sheet, and, and I. Actually, I could send this to anyone if you guys want it. Um, I'd have to pull the data off of it first, but um, we made our own in-house uh, data sheet. Catapult has a really good cloud-based system as well, but we wanted to take a look at um, uh, some of our own sort of uh, structure with the data. And, um, and this was really impactful. And the actual result of all this, if, I, if it'll go to the next page for me, hold on. There we go. Oh. That's a quote, explore then exploit. You can, you can quote me on that. Um, uh, oh, I forgot to include the picture. They, the result of all that, and, and, and I'm not saying it was because of us, but maybe we helped. Um, our soccer team ended up winning the national championship that year, which was really awesome. It was awesome to be just a little part of that. You know, most of the, all of the credit really goes to the coach and to the players, um, but we just maybe helped them in their decision-making process, which was pretty fun.